So uh, my name is Waylon Lewis, uh, as you can see, because it's right here on the video. I don't know why I said that verbally. And um, <laughs> I'm honored to be here with Mary Taylor and Richard Freeman of the Yoga Workshop and Dr. John Diard. Um, all three have been columnists for Elephant Magazine, now Elephant Journal, for many years. So it's great to have you on our first show of the season. Um, I did want to um, ask one or two more questions. I know you're doing a lot of work um, off the mat, you can say, in terms of health care. So maybe you could tell us about that. Well, we're um, working with various different organizations, taking the idea of uh, teaching people who are health care providers how to take care of themselves. It's like doctors and doctors, nurses. Doctors, nurses, um, social workers, <laughs> clergy, um, uh. so that they learn to do you know, meditation and yoga, and yoga in a contemplative manner. In other words, really focusing on the breathing and the joining together of the breath with the movement more so than the actual you know, specific asana or, or yoga postures. And, and using that as a ma means of just bringing their um, awareness into their own bodies and into their own circumstance so that they can then be of service to others without burning out, which is a huge problem in the medical world. People take care of others and sacrifice their lives and then just somehow 20 years later realize, oh, I forgot to take care of myself. Oh, and sounds they're, familiar. They're Except I'm less, yeah. use, less useful. <laughs> um, so how did that come about? Did you have that idea and say, hey, let's go meet with some hospitals? Or would, were people asking you to consult? Or? No, we'd, we'd been, uh, you know, it, it's kind of a natural thing. And I started working with um, Joan Halifax in the Being With Dying program She's a number a great of years ago. She's a Zen Buddhist Zen teacher. Zen Buddhist teacher down in Santa Fe. And it sort of evolved out of that. And then our friends Rodney Yee and Colleen Sademan have been doing Famous the, yoga teachers. the Urban Zen project out of New York. And so we both got involved with that. And so it's, uh -huh. it's kind of grown from mm -hmm. that. And that project is hoping to take... Um, contemplative care, yoga, uh, into uh, hospitals. And so they have a number of pilot programs going. And this should be yoga also for patients, people who are bedridden. Huh. And so very adaptive yoga. Shavasana. Shavasana, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Getting ready for Shavasana, too. Right. I forgot what it literally translated to. I was just thinking about the position. <laughs> right. We'll cut that out. <laughs> you know, it's such interesting. I work with a lot of nurses, and I mean, they work 12, 14 hour days, and they don't stop. They don't stop to eat. They don't stop to go to the bathroom. They just never stop. So I think, you know, if there was ever a group of people who really need to kind of plug in, you know, two, three minutes of silence into their life, and I guess what you're doing is, you know, yoga on the go, right? It's not like they have to, is there things they can do in between, like giving an injection? They can. Yeah. <laughs> As they're doing the injection. <laughs> no, but yeah, it's partly that and also just a state of mind. Yeah. You know, learning to, because we get caught up in going, going, going. And in fact, if you take just five minutes, sometimes it changes everything. And so they can actually step out of, of their role a little bit when they're washing their hands or whatever. Do you have like a, a yoga and eating mudra where they can actually, because they're usually doing things while they're eating and they yeah. can maybe they can like, like some mudras they can do while they're eating and then do yoga, yeah. you know, because it seems like nurses, they literally don't stop. They yeah. can't stop. Yeah. They're, they're in, in constant perpetual motion and I just feel so sorry for them because I try to say, God, there's got to be a law that says you must be able to stop and have 10, 20 minutes for lunch and and yeah, there's a law, but they're not going to abide yeah. by it. Yeah. And, and the, the medical system is set up so that it, it kind of perpetuates this. What, it, so, what do you mean by that? Well, it's just, you know, there's so much paperwork, so much, you know, it, in the, the way the medical system often has is, is been working these days is there are cutbacks, and so the nurses have more and more and more things they're having to do. And they're training physicians. <clears throat> uh, when you're an intern and a resident, they try to keep you awake for 80, 90 hours at a stretch just to toughen you up. Wow. That's wow. That's an exaggeration. Well, that's a slight exaggeration, but. Honey. That's not a good example. And it goes from, you know, that. It's more that like 75. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. 
So, um, so it's helping the helpers. And, and I would love to know, you know, what are some of those things you can do? If, they're, if they don't really have time for a break, what are you teaching them to do? Is it stuff when they're eating or a well, little they're, stretch? They're, or? Yeah, they're mindfulness exercises. So that, for instance, if you're washing your hands, you can you know, <clears throat> sort of think of a mantra or think of a song or think of just a, uh, an image that you like and you incorporate that into the activity of washing your hands, which you do a lot of in a hospital. Hopefully. Or if you're even, yeah, hopefully. Yeah. Or if you're moving a curtain, you know, you can uh. kind of coordinate that with your breath rather than just sort of doing it mindlessly. Huh. So, so why is a mantra or breath helpful? I mean, obviously breath is sort of, obviously thinking about your breath is clearly going to help stress, I would think. But why is mumbling random things to yourself uh, a sign of uh, <laughs> mental health? You're wanting me. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Well, we're, we're trying to look out for you, Waylon. It's, it's like right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, but, but it, what it does is it reminds you, like if you have an ongoing practice like you do with a sitting practice or an asana or yoga practice, then if you have just a little moment where you um, wash your hands in a manner like that, uh -huh. it reminds you of the physiological effect of a more consistent self-practice, like hmm. doing a meditation practice or a yoga practice. So for, I mean, all of us in this room aren't as, as uh, taxed and as um, busy and on the go as, as these you know, nurses and doctors, but we all live incredibly busy lives. We have children, we have jobs, we're running around school, whatever it is. Um, we could certainly apply something like that to our life. Like whenever you, you know, go to the bathroom or wash your hands, you touch in with your breath, what would you advise? With that, Dr. T.R. <laughs> you know, one of the things that I teach, which some people think is crazy, but I call it the one-minute meditation, right? Uh -huh. So it takes one minute. And it's very, very simple. It's just 30, 30 breaths, 30 bellows breaths in, out, through your nose, just 30 times. And then you sit still for 30 seconds. And you can repeat that. I mean, you can do it in the bathroom. You can do it in your car before you go to work. You can do it before you go to the grocery store. You can do it while your gas is pumping. You can take these little times to just pump oxygen in your brain. And most of us are hypoxic. We don't, have, we don't have much oxygen in our brain. And therefore, the brain is freaking out because it thinks it's going to suffocate. Yeah. So when you breathe oxygen in the brain, the brain goes, hey, I've got oxygen here. I'm not going to suffocate it. I can relax. I can be calm. And the, and the calm part of the nervous system, the parasympathetic part, starts to become you know, more active. And we actually turn this crazy thinking brain off. And it's a phenomenal technique. It's 30 seconds of breathing, 30 seconds of being still, and totally resets you. You can even do it while you're driving your car. You could park your car while you're breathing, and then just stop. Now you got the whole thing down to like you know, 30 seconds. You do that five <laughs> times a day, it's five minutes versus 10 minutes a day if you follow the math. If, I mean, people don't have 10 minutes a day. And you can get it to where you can do something so incredibly powerful in five minutes a day. It's amazing. And people don't breathe. We're walking around breathing like little rabbits, shallow breaths, and we're, we're walking around triggering upper chest receptors, which tell your body there's an emergency. Like if you saw a bear in the woods, you go, <gasps> you take an emergency breath, right? And those are emergency receptors. And most people walk around with little tiny shallow breaths all day long. You take 26,000 of those a day. So you have, you have nerves in the lower lobes of your lungs that calm you down. If you can breathe into those, you can reinstate a neurological calm. And that's what we lack in our crazy, busy life, you know? I appreciate how you make all this new age stuff sound scientifically based. <laughs> <laughs> what, are we? OK. So did you have any uh, last thing to uh, add to that? Because we need to. I'm kidding. <laughs> so I guess we're, you know, yeah. we're bringing it to Boulder with the the Cancer Caregiving right. Caregiver Symposium, and that's right. we're really happy about doing that, which is coming we'll, up in we'll March. We'll put some info yeah. on the screen, and, so, and we'll support that on yeah, Elephant. Yeah, and it's yeah. and it really is this thing that John was saying of taking a deep breath hmm. and dropping in. It's that simple. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you all three. Thanks. Uh, John Diard, Richard Freeman, and Mary Taylor. Thank you. Thank you.